what's new on the Burlington waterfront. Hey, now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Hi, my name is Mariah Riggs. Welcome to On the Waterfront. Today I'm excited to have Jackie Kelleher, who is the Executive Director of Vermont Family Network on my show. Hi, Jackie. Mariah, hi. Good to be here. Thank you for coming. Thanks. So uh, let's get right into it. Um, I kind of want to, uh, I know that you just started, just full disclosure, Jackie just stepped into her role of Vermont Family Network, which is very exciting. We're so excited to have her there. Um, and I wanted to just kind of uh, fill everybody in. So what is, what is your background before you came? Sure, uh, yes, it's very exciting to be at Vermont Family Network. It's, it's a dream come, come true. Uh, being able to work with children and, and families that are impacted by disability uh, and or special health care needs. It's like the end of my uh, journey in education, but yet the beginning of the last chapter. I, I keep saying the end of my journey, but that's going to be another 20 years. I still have student loans. Uh, <laughs> for, for sure. My, my, so my background is uh, I've been a, a teacher, an mm -hmm. administrator, mm -hmm. uh, professor, evaluator. Most recently, I was the state director of special education for the Agency of Education, where I got to spread peace, love, and compliance throughout the land in that role. Yay, thank you. Uh, in, in all of those roles, though, all of them, uh, my advocacy has about family, family empowerment, uh, family understanding of rights and responsibilities, engaging families in the education and the healthcare system. So uh, although primarily my work has been in educational psychology and special education in particular, uh, this brings together everything I've been doing the past uh, 25 years to a point of being to really help uh, lead an organization that's committed to family empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, the other important role that I've had that is the most important role, and that is being a mom, uh, for now adult children with disabilities and special health needs. Oh, I didn't know that. So I have full on experience of the road to IEP navigation, 504, and what families go through um, in uh, you know, raising, uh, raising children with complex needs and uh, assure, ensuring that they're getting uh, what they need to be able to live a meaningful, uh, independent life. And um, full disclosure, I don't know how many of you out there actually know this, is I have a 18-year-old son uh, who has autism. So um, I'm, I'm very familiar with yeah. the uh, journey that Jackie was just uh, talking about. And, um, you know, I think for families in particular, you know, it, it, it's a very convoluted system. Yeah. Um, and it takes a lot of know-how yeah. um, and a lot of elbow grease and... Um, the inner workings uh, can get caught up for people. Uh, somebody once told me, I think when Rowan was much younger, that um, you know you kind of need a master's in IEP management Ooh. as a parent sometimes just to understand the needs and um, and the resources available to your child. Yeah. Um, to be able to advocate for your child appropriately within the systems in place across Vermont. Um, and yeah. so it's really wonderful. I didn't, I, I didn't realize that you also had a personal component. Absolutely. And Mariah, my identical twins, who are now 25, uh, have autism spectrum disorder. Actually, they're like, Mom, we are autistic. They're very much identity first language individuals. And um, I, absolutely. I mean, it doesn't even matter what, <laughs> what background you really have when you are that parent, when you're that mm -hmm. family member. When you're navigating the acronyms alone in the systems and, and it don't necessarily have that, mm -hmm. I mean, did you get that guide when you when you had your child? Um, you know, congratulations, you're uh, you're a mom of a child with autism that had the step by step yeah. roadmap. I, I didn't. So um, I didn't. I had Ernestine Abel, who used to work at uh, Parent for Parent, Parent to Parent, um, who helped me out. Yeah. Um, but actually, Rowan was born in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. So we weren't here. Uh, we ended up moving back. I'm actually from, I, I'm from Vermont. Um, so I moved back here um, uh, after Rowan was diagnosed at two and a half. 
um, which we fought for a diagnosis in Texas. It's very, very different. Very than, different. Very different than Vermont. TEA. Yes. Uh, we are not going to get. We're not going to get into that. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that's really interesting. I didn't realize that you also had the family component, which I think is so crucial uh, to the work that Vermont Family Network does. And so, I think that leads me into my next question, uh, Jackie, for our audience who might not be aware of Vermont Family Network. What is the work Vermont Family Network does? And uh, you know, how would you say that to the layperson who's never heard of the organization? Sure, and I'll just pick up my, on my story to, to lead into that, and that is that when my children were small, we didn't have a VFN, and I was out of state also at the time. I was, I was in another, um, I was in uh, Connecticut, another community, and uh, you know, now that I look, I look at all that Vermont Family Network has to offer, and I'm in disbelief on a daily basis of how much uh, that, that we do and how much my family would have benefit, benefited from connecting with that organization early and often. Uh, you know, I, even my family members who have reviewed all the things that we d did said, I, you know, we could have benefited from the SIB shops, you know, the workshops that we do for the, the siblings um, mm -hmm. of kids with disabilities and, you know, some of the other uh, components. Uh, my, my mission uh, with coming to VFN was to make sure that every family in Vermont knows that we exist, that regardless of your zip code, that you have access to the high quality services and supports and connections and mentoring and uh, flexible funding streams, all, all these things that I can get into in greater detail, mm. but that, that we're not just located in the Burlington area. Mm. We're a statewide organization. We're the federally designated uh, parent training and information center. So just a point in FYI is that every state is required to have a parent training and information center under federal law. This is part of the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act uh, that um, for, you know, this is in, in particular for, um, you know, special education, uh, that, that there is a PTIC that's, that's there for families, that's there for um, uh, children, but also for professionals. And I don't think people know about us in that context as well, is that part of our obligation is to make sure we're also supporting those that are working in schools too. Well, that's interesting. And I, and I don't know if people are really aware of that. Yeah. Uh, which is a real thing. Yeah. Um, so, th th you know, it's good to know about Vermont Family Network. And, and another quick thought, too, why we're talking about Vermont Family Network, because it has gone through several iterations over the last 20 years. So uh, to kind of summarize, too, the historical components of Vermont Family Network, how it started, again, me going back 18 years yeah. to parent to parent. Uh, so how did it, because, you know, some of you might actually know it as a different organization because it has had sort of an evolution. Sure, yeah, and it was the parent-to-parent -parent, um, organization uh, prior to that and, you know, started by a group of families mm -hmm. who are very, you know, passionate about making sure that there was support available, but it's it's grown into to, to VFN over the past, mm -hmm. it was, say, a decade or so? Yep. Or, uh, yeah, a decade yes. or so that it emerged into, into VFN. And it also expanded beyond just um, the educational uh, perspective, so that it now includes that health, uh, that the healthcare needs, complex uh, health needs uh, of individuals. So it's expanded over time based on needs, uh, based on the number and nature of calls that were coming in that fortunately were being supported by uh, donors and other organizations, grants and contracts mm -hmm. that would come in from agencies that, that needed help uh, being able to uh, assist people right and well. Uh, o over time too, Vermont Family Network, uh, the staff uh, that have been there, some of them have been there the 20 years through the whole evolution of VFN. A majority of our staff are parents or grandparents or guardians mm -hmm. of uh, you know children and youth uh, or now you know, adult uh, mm -hmm. children uh, with disabilities or spe special health care needs. So they get it. Mm -hmm. They absolutely understand. Uh, you know, this is an organization when you get that first mm -hmm. clinical diagnosis or um, educational classification in your school system, and you don't know where to start. You know, we are the phone call, the email, the virtual meeting that you can just like fall into somebody's virtual arms and just say, I, I don't even know where to start. So I think that's a good question too is, so if somebody's watching this and you know somebody, um, a, a family member or somebody in your own family or a friend, 
um, who might have a child who could benefit from the work of Vermont Family Network, how would that person reach out to you? Sure, so we, we have our information on our website um, that has a, a phone number that you can call, an email that you can reach out to, uh, you'll most likely encounter Dominique at the uh, at, who's the voice who uh, you know takes a little bit of information about what you're specifically looking for and she matches you with a staff member and from there uh, they, they get to know you they get to find out what your specific needs are and starts uh, doing some wraparound of, of, of services and supports that meet your needs and th there's nothing formulaic it's all individualized for that particular family's needs so it's contacting us uh, through our helpline, mm -hmm. uh, the phone number, or an email connection, and even if you're not sure if you need BFN, even if you're just, you know, you you're, you, you suspect uh, that something might be going on, but you're you're not sure. Uh, please, uh, mm -hmm. please give us give us a call um, or an email, and that's that's what we're here for is to help navigate mm -hmm. educational system, to help um, navigate mental health systems. Uh, Medicaid, healthcare systems, all the paperwork that goes on, everything that, uh, that you could be really overwhelmed and stressed by. Mm -hmm. We've been through it, we've helped thousands of others go through it, and we can help you too. Which, which is wonderful, I mean, it's such an incredible resource. And um, you know, sometimes, and I always, uh, I, I tell this to other family people who, um, who might have questions about their own children. Yeah. Um, but you'd be surprised if you feel something as a parent or you have a gut response or you think there might be something going on with a child that you know, it doesn't hurt to find out if something actually is happening with a young toddler yes, um, or, or a child who, who might not be reaching certain milestones. As a parent, you are the first line and you will probably know faster than anyone, including your doctor who you only see yes. maybe every couple of months um, and it's really important to be that advocate for your child. And Vermont Family Network can get you the help that you need to see if there is something actually happening with your child. Um, and I can't, I can't uh, say enough uh, good things about their outreach um, and their engagement with local communities and families, um, assisting them uh, sometimes through some of the hardest periods of, of, of a parent's life. Thank you, yes, um, it's yes. It's a real thing. It, it is, and um, the, the the staff are so informed on the, uh, you know, the, the current uh, literature, the current uh, rules and regulations and policies, and uh, most they, they are always on top of the resources that are out there that are available to help meet your needs. And this is a, a wide range of. Uh, whether you need to learn how to be a partner with your individualized education program team, the IEP team. It can range from, from, from that piece to I'm struggling to find gas money to get my children to Boston Children's Medical. Do you have any ideas about that? Uh, if parents are looking for a mentor, uh, we have connections with other parents, either within our state who've gone through a training, or if you have a real specific need that Vermont doesn't have in terms of like the nature of the disability or healthcare need, we have, our, our network expands across the country and we can find someone who gets it, who understands that you can have in your life that just serves in that supportive role in addition to our staff. And you're not alone. I mean, there's, there's a lot to be said about that. And the resources are there too. I think that's the other big component. Um, we do live in a state that has remarkable resources um, for parents. And one of the ways to facilitate those resources is by going to Vermont Family Network and contacting them. Um, so uh, another quick thought, I wanted to um, talk about the different, the different types of family support that Vermont Family Network um, offers. Uh, to the community. Great. Um, we have a couple of different arms or units or, or branches if you looked at our organizational chart. Uh, so we, we've been talking about the family support uh, group, which is the one they specialize in education, mental health, and health care needs. Mm -hmm. And um, that group is, is not only helping and supporting uh, parents, but are doing some advocacy like, around the state, around issues pertaining to education, mental health, and healthcare uh, uh, needs, You're doing the parent match. 
Uh, we also uh, do, uh, we have a, a, a faculty program where our parents who have utilized our service want to give back in some way, and so they become trained to go work with the healthcare community. So some of our pediatricians who are training with the, on their medical license will get to work with family faculty to really understand and get the perspective of, of you know, what families are going through as they are navigating this often complex world of raising a child with, with these unique differences. Uh, so that, you know, that's part of our family supports. I also mentioned our, our sib shops, which are the workshops that we have for the siblings that are really thoughtful monthly meetings where uh, kids are engaged in a, in a fun activity, but it has a reflective component to it. And they can, uh, you know, have some takeaways to bring back to their families as they, you know, siblings, we can't forget about the siblings. Yeah. You know, that, <laughs> as, as, you know, yeah. a mom who I had, you know, kids with much more complex needs, I always felt so bad for, you know, those missed, missed ballet performances performances or recitals mm -hmm. or when there was a meltdown that just you know it just didn't happen like mm -hmm. so we also have that type of um, sibling support that's available as well yep. you know so family supports and there and there's more on, on our website to to unpack and go mm -hmm. through the the flexible funding is really neat I, we get things like the the Doug Flutie grant where we're able to disseminate to, to families to help them defray costs of summer camp or other inclusive opportunities in the summer and uh, you know a majority of of all of our programs and services are no cost and not an income eligibility guideline. A lot of people ask mm -hmm. that, are you only working with a certain group? No, all means all, all of our families. So that's family support. We also have our puppets and education program. Oh, gotcha. Okay. okay, three months ago, I went, puppets, puppets? We're working with puppets. <laughs> wow, it was, oh, it is absolutely in line with the Vermont Family Network mission. Uh, mm -hmm. These uh, puppeteers, these professionals are working with evidence-based, social-emotional learning, uh, health and safety uh, curricula that are vetted by experts. They go out to, our, they, 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 they reach seven to 10,000 children mm -hmm. each year. Wow, um, across our state, a little bit into New York, they do uh, either either puppet shows that are that are developmentally appropriate. So they go, they do five shows a day. They differentiate from kindergarten to fifth grade to uh, sixth and seventh grade uh, workshop models on topics like kindness, on uh, topics like anxiety and stress mm -hmm. and worry and friendships. And um, there's there's even a really sensitive, powerful one I was able to see on, on sexual abuse and awareness. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the amount of, the, the type of feedback, because we've got, we, we are very data rich also as, as an organization. The amount of qualitative data that we have from feedback that we've received or how many kids were helped because um, teachers and faculty and uh, school nurses, school counselors were made aware mm -hmm. of particular situations. You know, bullying and har harassment is, a, is another, uh, another topic that we cover. It's, it's just uh, an, an amazing way for arts engagement to be a true platform for engaging all kids. And so that's, that's, part, of what, um, that's part of what Puppets does. They also do, as I said, workshops uh, with, the, with the older children as well. And, and they're just, uh, they're, they're phenomenal. And um, you know, we're very proud of, of, of the impact they've been able to have. And then the other arm that we do, um, well, we have like a policy and advocacy. And policy and advocacy, I know that can be a little touchy subject, <laughs> but we, yeah. our, our aim is to, uh, is to identify and work with individuals with disabilities or the parents mm -hmm. and families and to empower them to tell their stories mm -hmm. and to consider doing their own advocacy across the state or to sit on school boards or to sit on statewide committees and task forces and you know, these parents are experts on their kids, right? I mean, that, they're, they're experts on their story and situation. And these are the folks who are going to inform practice and truly make Vermont uh, supportive communities for all, you know, in, including those with disabilities. So that policy and advocacy, we prepare, we do that training. We have a Vermont leadership series where they get the base training. Then we have like a monthly or bi-monthly networking session where we talk about the issues that are up 
So how would somebody uh, reach out if they wanted to get more involved in policy and advocacy? Um, uh, with with <clears throat> anything that I'm talking about, you can go right away to our hotline, and I, I Dominique will get you connected with that person. And if you are, like, all of this information mm -hmm. is on our website. So if you are interested in the Vermont Leadership Training or in the, the policy and advocacy, advocacy networking that we are, are doing, just our, our first, our, our phone call or an email will get you connected to whatever area is going to meet your needs. And that also gets me to another big thing that I've noticed. Uh, Vermont uh, Family Network right now is really working as far as outreach. Uh, one of the things you talked about at the beginning is one of the biggest missions right now in Vermont Family Network because it's unfortunately due to the way the, the nature of our state is that things at time tend to be bottlenecked in Chittenden County. And they don't get out to other parts of the state. And so a big imperative of a Vermont Family Network is trying to get out to other parts of the state, trying to get down to Brattleboro and Bennington and up to Newport, you know, where, where uh, you know, sometimes people in the state don't get there very often because it's, it's, a, long, it's a long way away. And, um, and so I think that's really a big part of the engagement is trying to become more of a statewide organization yeah. um, and drawing in on those resources. Um, as parents and so that's another thing too is if anybody knows somebody outside because Chittenden County also too has a much more um, has a much stronger network and structure of support yeah. for parents and people with special health needs and once you kind of get out of the Chittenden corridor um, some of those resources dwindle significantly yes yes and uh, they're the places of most need through across the state yes and um, so that's a big part of the outreach that VFN is doing. I mean, what is what, what is the plan for, for engaging with some sure. of those more rural communities? And I do want to share too, even though, and thank you for, that. that, that is a myth that we're trying to debunk, is mm. that we're like specific to Chittenden County, yep. which no, thank you for, for clarifying that. And our, our staff, uh, we've got staff located around the state. Mm -hmm. They're called field staff. So they're still yep. part of our family support group, but they're located in areas that where they know the specific resources in that area. They know um, even like therapists that are available when I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm looking at six month waiting lists or so. And, you know, I've got a colleague that's like, nope, you know, try right here. This, you know, they're able to really give timely, accurate, accurate and relevant information in those particular areas. What we're doing, uh, myself and, and other senior leadership, our new communications coordinator, we're, we're contacting social justice organizations, mm -hmm. other organizations that might not know about us across the state and getting some time to explain what we do. And the reaction is always, and this is free? <laughs> this, this is a free, like, no, 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 no. Like, but not believing it, absolutely. Like, what's the catch? What's the deal? What, you know, what membership do I have to purchase? And it's like, no. Uh, so we're also doing, you know, letter writing. We're doing, uh, we're trying to get, uh, uh, different op-ed articles in, mm -hmm. in the media in every corner of, of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, so our outreach plan has just been just just going to the mat and mm -hmm. you know identifying who could really benefit and moving from there. Um, and then uh, again being in the, the areas of um, the, the most rural communities that particularly a spotlight was shown on that during the, the, the yep. pandemic, the disparities that were there. We're being very in, intentional about reaching out to those that are working with uh, those kids on a regular basis. So for example, right now we're working with uh, the School Nurse Association from across the state, uh, maternal and child health, mm -hmm. uh, school liaisons, like th those that have a statewide reach yep. and making sure that uh, our information is, is understood, it's mm -hmm. messaged in a way that families understand, it has representative in imagery, yep. so it's inclusive of all, because even the definition yep. of family is different from family to family. So It's true, and those are the people yeah. that might catch it too. Yes. yes. Um, you know, nurses, especially school nurses, are on the yep. front line. And they might notice things uh, before, before even sometimes parents, because parents don't know what to look for. Yes, yes. Um, and that's another big thing is trying to educate parents around what they should be looking for uh, with their children. Um, yeah. and, then, and then trying to bridge the gap between understanding and resources. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to quickly talk about too, which I think is really valuable that I've learned, um, <clears throat> is how important early intervention is. Mm -hmm. And I don't think uh, a lot of people fully um, understand that. 
So I thought if you could speak a little bit about the importance of early intervention on uh, outcomes and um, long-term effectiveness of like treatment and and um, and and uh, education uh, for individuals. Yes, a again, another reason why even if you suspect <laughs> and, and need someone to talk through what you're what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what's your, what you what you're sensing in your child, is that the earlier that your child can be a part of um, supports and services that that use evidence-based practices uh, to to intervene around the area of concern, um, the, the the greater the greater the outcome of student success ultimately. With that said, too, it's not to panic if you know you your your child is, is is older and you're suspecting something. Early intervention can be matched with whatever developmental trajectory your child is is on or or in at that moment. Uh, but that's that's part of the education that we do too. Is that when um, when when families are discussing with their 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 health uh, the, their their health uh, community partners, their health plans, or their their education systems, is that we help uh, we help navigate like what is an evidence based practice? What is an what does an intervention look like? What what should I be you know asking for or considering uh, given this disability or given this health care need? Uh, because there's a lot of information out there. It's information overload. So we, we, you know, we like to think that we are that resource that can help you navigate through that complex world of what what does an intervention look like, mm -hmm. you know. The, again, the sea of acronyms and the names that come with some of those interventions. But the earlier you can intervene, uh, the more likely uh, a successful outcome. And that successful outcome is just as individualized as the child. And that's been shown repeatedly through research and studies. Yeah. Um, it's pretty evidence-based at this point. Mm -hmm. That the earlier you, uh, you you get in there with a child and you engage with them um, appropriately, uh, based on their needs, the better the outcomes are long term. Sure, sure. Um, it's it, it's real. So um, again, you know, if you if you're out there and you think that, uh, make sure to reach out to Vermont Family Network. Um, they're an incredible resource. One of my favorite things about Vermont Family Network um, is that as an organization, a lot, of the, a lot of the places where special health need groups come from is a place of where the funding is, that it's based on the grants available or the funding, you know, from, from but Vermont Family Network is unique in the fact that it's sort of grassroots. It comes from the parents and it comes from the people who are actually needing and participating in the services as opposed to coming from like what the state is allocating, um, which I think is one of the things yeah. that makes Vermont Family Network particularly unique as an organization and particularly special as an organization um, because families are at the forefront. They're not just people, you know, they're not just part of the people who are being served. They're actually part of the engaged uh, DNA of the actual organization. Um, and so that's another thing is I think if you are a parent, please reach out. Try to engage with Vermont Family Network because it is about you and your family. I yeah, I love that. And I was <laughs> saying even, even uh, you know, our board constitution uh, with Vermont Family Network, 51% uh, it needs to be comprised of parents and families of those with disabilities or special health needs uh, or individuals themselves. So even that makes a big difference when you've got that type of advisement happening mm -hmm. as we continue to build and grow and, uh, and also sustain what, what works. Yeah, and that's why Vermont Family Network works is because it's built by the parents who are using the services. It's not a state organization that just kind of has a bunch of policy policy people telling people what they think they need and yeah. and that's that's why it's such a beautiful organization um, one quick thing um, I wanted to cover is if we do have some people who have been watching this and would like to give to Vermont Family Network um, how can they give to Vermont Family Network uh, sh you can give in, in a variety of ways. Uh, you know, certainly, you know, financial contributions are always appreciated. So we can continue to have our staff right sized. Uh, the number and nature of the volume of calls, particularly from the pandemic, particularly in the past six months, you know, ha have risen. So we're always looking to to build staff capacity, mm -hmm. high quality staff who get you know trained up, uh, you know, right and well to meet the needs. Uh, so, you know, finance, finance support, you know, we have donation opportunities through our, our website. Uh, you can connect uh, through our office again to talk to our development. We do have a development um, manager where you can even determine where you would
would want your dollars to go, either restricted funds or I like puppets, whatever you know you <laughs> choose to invest in. But we're always looking for volunteers and interns uh, to be able to help us uh, do some of those outreach efforts, that, you know, to help us with our, some of our social communicate social media communication needs, or you know, even help help us uh, look for grants that are a good fit for the organization. Because as you said, we don't just grab dollars for the sake of grabbing dollars. It's got to fit with being mission specific and to uh, to grow the, the 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 good things that we're currently doing. So volunteer opportunities, serving on the board is another option, and then we definitely appreciate donor and fiscal resources very much. Yeah, I can't I, I can't say enough about what Vermont Family Network does, especially for our underserved communities in Vermont. And um, again, it is free of charge. They help families, and they also help families advocate for themselves, which is such an important part of how it works as a as a as a parent with a child with special health needs. Yes. Um, and so, anything you can do to support Vermont Family Network, uh, you can reach out the, to them directly. It's www.vermontfamilyorg. Um, and uh, please log in there. Uh, all the information that has been supplied during the show is also on the website. Um, anything else you would like to tell our viewers? We're about to wrap up. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I know Vermont is small, but, but we have need. You know, we have just, just students with disabilities alone in our schools. We have over 15,000 students. Uh, we are the highest in the nation of students who are classified with um, emotional disturbance, which has to do with anxiety and depression. Uh, that, and that's a, a fact from the Office of Special Ed Programs. Uh, you know, so we have tremendous need. And so whether you are thinking of, about supporting or accessing our, our, our service, uh, we're here with that skill set and that expertise, and we're positioning ourselves to be able to, to work with, with all of the families who will reach out. And then the last plug is for parent training and counseling as a related service. That's the most underutilized law in special education, that parents get the training on everything from child development to how to be an effective IEP partner. That is in the law. It gets written into the IEP, must happen. We are that training site for parents because people will say, well, great, I get training, but where do I go? That's another call to us, and your district can make that call on your behalf. So please, if you know anybody, anybody in your family, have any questions, comments, anything, go to www.vermontfamilynetwork, all one word, dot org, and check out the wonderful work that they do. Jackie, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been such a pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you right back here next month. Take care.